Hi everybody, it's Malik again on his channel. Today we will learn how to install two different or the same operating systems on two physical drives connected to a computer or laptop. From a security point of view, this method will help you create a separate boot and recovery partition for each drive, meaning each operating system will boot and run in a separate environment, completely independent of each other. As a result of this method, we will not use the usual bootloader of operating systems, since its use does not guarantee 100% stable operation. For automatic boot of the main, that is, the most frequently used operating system, I recommend putting this system in the boot priority in first place, and to boot the second system after turning on the computer, use the boot menu. This is not difficult to do and I will show the whole layout in my video tutorial. I open File Explorer, then this PC, and here we see two drives, Drive C and Drive F. The first SSD with a capacity of 232 gigabytes has Windows 11 installed. Drive F is the second SSD with a capacity of 930 gigabytes. And it is on the second physical drive that I will install the second operating system, for example, Ubuntu. You can also use this video tutorial to install any other operating system on the second physical drive, for example, Windows 10, Windows 11, and so on. Please follow me step by step and you will succeed. So, to install a new operating system, we need a USB flash drive of at least 8 gigabytes. I connect my flash drive to the computer, and we can see that the volume of my flash drive is quite sufficient. Now we need to download the Ubuntu ISO file. To do this, open the description of my video and click on the link to the Ubuntu ISO download page. On this page, click here and select Ubuntu Desktop. Then click here. And in this window, click download the latest version of Ubuntu. The ISO file has started downloading and we need to wait a while until the download is complete. The ISO file has finished downloading. I open Explorer, then the Downloads folder, and here we see that the Ubuntu ISO file is on my computer. Now we need to download the free Rufus application to create a bootable Ubuntu USB flash drive. This is one of the best applications for this purpose. To do this, open the description of my video again and click on the link to the Rufus application download page. On this page, scroll down a bit and click here. Rufus has downloaded to your computer and you can close the browser. I open Explorer again, then the Downloads folder and click on the Rufus icon. The application opens and here we see our USB flash drive. Click, select, and select the Ubuntu ISO file. Click, open. There is no need to change the settings. And now you need to click Start. Click OK. And here we see a warning from the program that all files on the flash drive will be completely deleted. I click OK. And the process of creating a bootable Ubuntu flash drive has begun. The Ubuntu bootable USB flash drive is ready. Click, close. Now I will open this PC to see what is going on with the USB flash drive. Yes, here we see that the USB flash drive is really ready and now we can start installing Ubuntu on the second disk. To create a separate boot and recovery partition for each disk, for increased security before starting the installation, we need to disconnect the first disk from the computer on which the operating system is already installed. I suggest disconnecting the first disk in one of two ways. Method number one, turn off the computer and disconnect it from the power source. Then remove the system unit cover and disconnect the SATA cable from disk number one. After that, turn on the computer and to start installing Ubuntu on the computer, you need to call the boot menu immediately after turning on the computer. Method number two, this method works if your motherboard has a function for disabling the SATA port. 
If there is no such function, then you need to use method number one. And so, for method number two, you need to reboot the computer and open the BIOS. To do this, immediately after rebooting, you need to frequently press the Dell or F2 key until the BIOS opens. Unfortunately, BIOS is designed differently on different devices and there is no single standard, but the essence of the actions will be the same and I will show how it will happen on my Gigabyte motherboard. Using the keyboard, I go to the Settings section, then to the Ports section, and press Enter. In this window, I go to the SATA and RST configuration section and press Enter. In this window, I go to port number 0, which is where the first disk with my Windows 11 is connected and press Enter. Here I select Disabled and press Enter. Now my first disk will be disconnected, as if I pulled the SATA cable out of it, and this will be completely safe for the disk and the motherboard. To save changes to the BIOS settings, you need to press F10 on the keyboard and press Enter. If your motherboard has such a function, you can find out experimentally which port the disk needed for disconnection is connected to and repeat all my actions. After the computer reboots, to install Ubuntu on the computer, you need to call the boot menu to boot the computer from the bootable USB flash drive Ubuntu. Immediately after the start of the reboot, continuously press a certain key on the keyboard to bring up the boot menu. I press the F12 key, for you it could be F8, F9, F11, F12, or some other key, there is no single standard and different computers may have different keys to call the boot menu. The boot menu opens and here we see our USB flash drive. To start the installation you need to press Enter. I'm deciding whether to try or install Ubuntu. Enter. The Ubuntu USB flash drive has loaded, and at the beginning of the installation you need to select the operating system interface language. I choose English. Next. Next. Here we select the language for the keyboard. Next. I am using a wired connection. Next. In order not to make the video too long, I will press Skip. I need to install Ubuntu. Next. Here I press Next. I choose the default installation. Next. I do not need this. Next. I am installing Ubuntu on a separate disk. Next. In this window, you need to select an account name. I will write my name. Then I will set a password to log in to the system. I disable the password request to log in to the system. Next. In this window, you need to select your region. Next. So, we have made the basic settings and to continue the installation, click Install. For a while, we don't need to do anything and you can relax, have a cup of tea or coffee. To complete the installation, you need to reboot the computer. Click Enter. The computer rebooted and the Ubuntu desktop loaded. In order not to make the video too long, I will only give a brief overview of the Ubuntu desktop. To get started, there is everything you need, a minimal set of applications, a command prompt, and so on. To switch to another operating system that is installed on the first disk, you need to connect the first disk to the computer again. If your motherboard does not have a function to disable the SATA port in the BIOS and you disabled the first disk using method number one, that is, disconnected the SATA cable from the disk, then first you need to turn off your computer. And after that, you to reconnect the SATA cable to the first disk. But if you disconnected the disk using method number two, then you need to reboot the computer and also enter the BIOS. Using the keyboard, I go to the settings section, then to the ports section, and press enter. 
In this window, I go to the SATA and RST configuration section and press Enter. In this window, I go to port number 0, to which the first disk with my Windows 11 is connected and press Enter. Here I select Enabled and press Enter. To save changes to the BIOS settings, you need to press F10 and here press Enter. After this, the computer will immediately reboot and now we need to open the BIOS again. For this, we press the necessary key frequently. The BIOS has opened, and now we need to decide which operating system we will use most often in order to put this system in the boot priority in first place. To do this, you need to go to the boot section, then go to boot option number one, and press enter. Most often I will use Windows 11. It is installed on disk number one, 250 gigabytes in size. I go to this disk and press enter. Now we see that my first disk with Windows 11 is in the boot priority. To save changes to these settings in the BIOS, you need to press F10, then press enter, and the computer will reboot. Windows 11 is loading. I enter my PIN code and the desktop immediately opens. Now after each time I turn on the computer, Windows 11 will load. But if you want to load Ubuntu, then you need to restart the computer and call the boot menu by pressing a certain key on the keyboard. Or immediately after turning on, you can also call the boot menu by pressing a certain key. In the boot menu, you need to select the operating system and press Enter. I select Ubuntu, press Enter, and now Ubuntu will load on my computer. I hope that this method of installing two operating systems on two physical disks will not be too difficult for you, and in the end you will succeed. Thank you very much for your attention to my video. Have a nice day.